So I spend a few minutes a day reading through my comments and trying to figure out if there's anything that you guys would like to be interested in to know about that I could make a video on and whatnot. And yesterday I stumbled across a comment in particular that was asking whether I could explain and kind of show how you work with skins for entities and models and mobs in Minecraft using Blockbench and Photoshop. And that's what I thought I'd do with this video. Essentially give you a bit of a rundown on how the skin are laid out and stuff like that, but also explain sort of how I can work with the two different softwares and what kind of benefits you have from working with both. Oh yeah, hi by the way, I'm Kevin, also known as Arts by Kev here on the interwebs. So in front of us right now we have my Minecraft skin in the middle here. This is a post I made for the Minecraft subreddit and my own Twitter account the other day. Essentially it's a bit of a breakdown component guide as to how the skin is laid out. So for the left we have the Blockbench pre-skin. This is essentially what you get when you start up a Minecraft skin in Blockbench and I'm going to show you that in a bit. And then to the right we have my final skin when it was done and dusted in Blockbench. But I also did some tweaks to the actual image itself in Photoshop before I was completely happy with it. So if you look at the skin straight away, you might notice that, okay, I can kind of map this out. There's some like eyes there, and this potentially means that the head then, mm -hmm, that makes good sense. But it's also good to know what part of the head is what square here and how it's laid out. Because everything is like you take a cube and you break it apart, and then you puzzle the piece next to one another so they make sense. So that's that. If we were to jump into the second one, you can kind of see that these components of the full skin, if we go to the first one again, this is the entire map, the entire texture. So that part of the texture is the base model skin, and that part of the texture is the overlay. So this is the second layer to the player skin. And then as well, we also have the color-coded components to what piece goes where. So if you don't have, for example, block bench, or you're trying to do your skin in paint and whatnot, this is sort of how you would have to understand the skin in order to be able to put the things on the right place. And then, of course, there's also this color code guide right here, so that the white squares, they are the top one, the right ones are the green ones, the front is the blue, bottom is the gray, left is the red, and back is the yellow. And that's how it's laid out by default in Blockbench. So let's jump into Blockbench for a second. All right, so here in Blockbench, what we want to do is to go down in our new section. This is the first screen you'll be faced by if you install Blockbench on your computer. You click on Skin, and that's going to bring you into the project scene. Now, we already have Steve selected by default here, and we're going to start work with that guy. And now we also want to tick in the layer texture. Now, you will already from the beginning receive a duplicate layer model skin, but layer texture is really good here because it gives you outlines to the second layer of the Minecraft skin whenever you make it. So we're going to confirm that one. And as you can see here, we have the default skin. And the only visual components are the default skin components right here, the ones that aren't with the cutout, because they are in hidden. These are hidden layers. If I were to activate that, you can see now that now the body shows up, now the top of the right arm shows up and whatnot. And that's good to know for future reference. Sometimes when I work with this, I might completely just strip these. But when you start working on a skin, usually you don't need the second layer. You kind of start from the bottom up and then you fill your model in with more information as you go. So. If we were to take a quick look at this, I'm going to use the paint bucket for that, and I'm going to just grab a harsh red. If I were to bucket that face, you can see, aha, okay, that's correlating with this one, so that's the front face of the character. I'm doing that. Red one, as you can see, it's the side of the head on that side. Top, it's the white, bit like I told you before. Black is the bottom, or gray. Yellow is the back, and green is the other side. Mm-hmm. Now, the good part about this is if we're going to edit, you can see that the model is aligned with the center of the scene, which means that if we were to use mirror painting, if we paint on this side, it's going to show the very same thing on that side. And you can see that correlating up here as well. If I start doing this, I'm going to grab somewhat of like an orange-ish and bring it down to a very bright one. So we get a bit of a skin tone, sort of a skin tone. A skin usually has many more tones than just like an orange or pink. But we'll go with this one for now. So I'm going to paint over that, and you can see instantly it shows color there and there at the same time. So what I do here, it's going to show up there as well. I'm going to paint that top, the back, and behind. And luckily it's only mirroring from left to right, not from front and back, because that would make an awful lot less sense if it did. I'm also going to give the arm a bit of like a, a skin tone, I think, inside like that. Maybe the legs as well, like so for the beginning at least, before we do anything else. I think I might have missed that one. Good. And might do it for the face as well. Now, I know that this is the front of the face because that this model is pre-posed in such a way that it lifts the face. So regardless of how I rotate and work around this, the lifted face is the face of the character. 
Now, if I want to make sure that I know that by default as well, when I'm working with this, I might as well just paint a few like dots like that. So that's the eyes. So now I work with this character, I have an idea of where the eyes are, but I don't need them personally when I do this, but it's a good way that you can keep track of what face is to face yourself. So I might add a bit of like a shadow to what I think is the jaw, for example. There might also be like a bit of an ear going on down here. So maybe add like a shadow around the ear like that, potentially. Yeah, maybe like a bit of an inner ear. And as you can see that, if you go to edit, already right now we have started the texture on this side and also started the texture on that side. Even though we just worked on this side due to the mirroring tool in the paint. So that's really easy and NFT. I hope you understood a bit about how that works. And for the rest of this video, I thought that we were going to actually model uh, or work with the texture for a completely different model in Minecraft. Because I think player skins, they make sense in their own way. But let's jump into something that is a bit different. Because the question was about entities. Entities and mobs. So, I think for this one, we're going to pick the Hoglin. So what's really nice about using Blockbench for model textures and skin textures and whatnot is that when you click on skin right here and you were to click on this model field up you get a drop down menu with a bunch of the different mobs that you can choose from and they're already pre-laid out with their texture uh, and whatnot but what you can't see here it's a bit sad is that because i'm using obs for the recording i can't show you the drop down the drop down menu actually doesn't show up in the recordings and one way i may work around this in the future is by using a different screen cap software but i think all in all it doesn't really mean too much if i were to show you the drop down or not just know that it's there so if i click on here i'm going to be given the options to choose whatever i'd like and i'm going to choose the hoglin by scrolling down and you can see how it changed the hoglin right there so it's there in the background but yeah sadly you couldn't just see it and i'm going to confirm i'm going to keep it 16 by 16 and straight away i get the hoglin model in front of myself so now I want to try to figure out what is what on the Hoglin model, but by just using my brain slightly, I can see that, for example, the front leg is slightly thicker than the left back leg. You can see how this is like one, two, three, four, five, six pixels, and this is one, two, three, four, five. Uh huh. If I take a brief look at the texture sheet up here, it seems as if these that I guess be the legs are slightly bigger than these ones. So, uh huh, that means front leg and back leg. Okay. Now, trying to make sense of the rest of the model. Okay, we're going to go back. And we have like the ears, for example, they're square. Do we have anything that represents the ears or resembles the ears up here? Yeah, that seems to be this part up here. We have um, these horns or tusks. Yeah, the tusks. And they seem to be represented here. It seems like it also uses the same texture for both tux tusks because I can't see two of them. So I guess it's just a flip mirror version. And what else do we have? We have this face right here. And I'm going to assume that the face is this part. Because it's kind of flat. It's not super big. And this big square out here, you can see this is like a, an extra big square, big square, and big square. If this was to be break and broken down, it seems like that would be the main skin. And that also means that this piece up here, the green and red one, that's probably these two. So these are the main of the hoglin. Okay, that makes sense. Now we've figured out how the model works. And we can also double check that by taking, for example, a sharp color. If I were to draw a bit on this one, yeah, you can see how that paints on these two ones. And since I'm using the mirror painting, I get on the both sides, good. That's actually a really cool way to do it. Maybe you should, yeah, why not? Let's maybe do something like that, or uh, like a bit of a flamey thing. Not too straight up, like that maybe. Mm -hmm. Like a saw. like a saw. Yeah, we could go with that. I think that's a cool main for a little bit of a hoggling guy. Yeah, well, well, uh, We'll leave that in for now. That could be our main. Okay, so next thing we have the, what I guess is the face. I'm going to assume that that's that one right there. See so if I were to paint. Yep, very correct. That was indeed the face. Uh, I guess that this is for the big square. Mm -hmm, correct. You have the red one there. This is the top. That means that this one is the bottom. Yep, correct. And I said these were the front legs, the one that are bigger down here. So yep, very correct. I start painting on them. And the back legs. Yep, very correct. And the tusks. Yep, it seems like it's also mirrored that one and they keep the same information. Nice to know. So now we can start working on texturing this guy.
All right, I'm gonna be fair and say that I have no clue whatever the heck I am doing. I'm, yeah, never seen something like this before. I just thought I'd play around with the colors. And I mean, it's not turning out bad, but I have no idea what I'm supposed to call this. Uh, but the reason why I stopped the video wasn't that. The reason why I stopped the video is that I'm gonna show you something that I think many people do in order to just try to make their skin slightly more interesting. It's called gradients. And one interesting way that you can do that with simplicity in block patterns is to go by to, for example, opacity 10 or 20. I'm gonna go with uh, 10 for this case. Bring up my size brush to about two, because that give, still gives me a good square to work with. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the colors from the base of the side and then I'm going to drag down to a very dark one and now from the bottom up I'm going to just paint with this opacity all the way up the wall you might not see too much of this but I'm going to just paint it all the way up the at the edge to about the second highest pixel like that and then from the second pixel now I'm going to start again and do the same thing and in other softwares you might just have a tool that's called gradient that you might just drag on top of a, of a model surface and do this with without having to do it like this way and then I'm going to pick a random pixel slightly further down and do the same thing again and go back and forth over it another one further down go back and forth over it so what you're asking yourself now but what, what does the what does this do I can't even see results well there is results and you might notice that already if I turn it on the side but if you go into edit and I go out. You may see now this entire side goes from a slightly brighter to a slightly darker tone. All in all, straight over the side. And this is used by so many people to try to make the models more interesting, give them more depth and personality and character and maybe work with a different style. So I'm going to continue doing that for the rest of the faces around the model right now and see what it looks like in the end. So I had a quick thinker and I realized that maybe the time lapse isn't the best way to go at this. I think it's better if I just pull you into Photoshop and show you how much you can do with this software instead compared to working with Blockbench at this point in time. And the way you do that is by saving your texture in Blockbench for the model in a file folder and then you take that file and just put it into Photoshop as a new document. And that's how easy that is. So let's say, for example, I wanted to work with the gradient. What I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to take the pencil tool, add a second layer, and I'm going to take my pencil with the size of one. I'm just gonna drag out a big line like that. And then I'm gonna with a slightly brighter color, like the gray, for example, a slightly brighter gray, once again, slightly brighter gray, once again. Now, sometimes I even have these components pre-prepared in, in a different document. But the thing is you could use gradients and whatnot as default standard tools, but what you lose with that is that kind of Minecraft-esque feel of something blending over a while in very, clear distinct lines across the texture and I think personally that is a really nice pixel art way of just presenting a model for presenting light sources and stuff so we're going to take all of these now we have a good gradient to work with I'm going to copy part of that gradient like so and bring that all the way down to my legs right here I'm going to put it one way block down and then I'm going to size this one so it's even with the top that even with top and then bring it out to the sides even with the side and stuff so that pixel right there save it like so and i'm going to blending options on this layer and as you can see here as soon as i start working with the blending options well you can't see the blending options itself of course because i'm using obs and overlays whatnot but i as you can see there's a bunch of different effects and you can see how they change up in my little field there so i'm going to go with one of these and just see how much extra detail or what kind of feel that adds to the to the original model All right, so now I've just done a bit of a quick gradient work without trying to figure out where I want things to be. So what I'm gonna do now instead is to go in through my gradients that I have here, and I'm going to select certain areas of the model that I wouldn't like to have with this color shade on top of them that I know personally I would like to stick out. And I think teeth are a good example of that. I know also which <laughs> sides I've been putting it on. So what I'm gonna do is to take those two layers and just delete the information on top of the teeth. So you can see the teeth pop a bit there, like so. So now we're going to step back into Blockbench and see what the effect of that was. And yeah, as you can see, straight away there is an awful lot that just popped with not much editing at all. There's an awful lot of depth now to this character, simply due to the fact we added gradients to it. See? So it pops a fair bit. But let's continue with adding just some more features and fun things in Photoshop. <laughs> So 
So now you may think, aha, we're in Minecraft, it's time to look at the beautiful mob. Well, you would be correct if it wasn't for the fact that what we have just done in Block Banish and Photoshop doesn't really work with Minecraft. You see, the hoglin texture is actually laid out in a different way. It's easy to texture the way we did just now because we had so many tools to work with, but what we're going to have to do the next is to actually make it so that it works and fundamentally looks like the hoglin texture that is current in Minecraft. Because if I were to do this, <laughs> that is freaky. I <laughs> just look at this guy and of course he's freezing because it's not the nether. But just look at that. You can see how the texture is not lined up in any way, shape or form it's supposed to be. Okay, so we're going to go and fix that in Photoshop. Okay now, so why didn't this work as it was supposed to do in Minecraft? I mean, we've made a texture, it should be all be fine, right? Well, the vanilla hoglin is actually laid out in a different way. Like, as you can see, this texture document is not as we have it here, 128 by 128. It's actually only 128 wide and 64 high. Now that gives us a completely different document to work with and it also <laughs> forces us to think in a different way when we put together this mob. So another thing that I noticed when I was moving our entire hoglin over, because as you might have figured out, you would have to take all of these components and put them into the corresponding spot within a texture sheet like this. So it looks like that in the end. See how that is different to the one we have over here? It's not too much work and too much hassle. If you have a software like Photoshop, it takes literally two minutes at most to fix that. It's super easy. But another thing that I noticed is within Blockbench, we have another little bit of an issue, and that is that the main you see over here is actually two pixels too wide. Yes, so I had to reduce that one. And when I say it's two pixels too wide, this entire sheet right here is actually four pixels too wide. So the actual hoglin itself, if we were to copy this, has a pixel reduction to each side of the main by two pixels. So what I did was that I took these and I just shoved them in like that and had that be my new main. And as you can see in comparison to the one we have below, it's two pixels in reduction. If I were to paste it next to itself, it's two pixels in reduction. So it's four pixels all in all that we reduced the entire main width. And you can see over here that that's the result we have. So if I were now to save this one and go back into Minecraft, let's see what the hoglin looks like. All right, are we ready to see the hoglin? Ta -da! Uh, well, th didn't we just fix the texture? Well, we actually did, but I'm going to show you another thing that is really interesting and worth knowing if you're working with any form of texture in Minecraft. So if I click F3 and then T while holding F3, then I update the current resource pack. As you can see, it says reloaded resource packs. So now it reloads the entire resource pack that I was working with. And now anything that I've done edits to or changed or resaved within that particular resource pack folder when I had the game active is now updated. Ha! Ah, there it is. Looking all fine and dandy, and all we did was to just update the resource pack. We also have a soggling guy. Gave him some white eyes and a bit of like a weirder skin. That looks kind of fun. Yeah, and this is usually what happens when I've played around too long in the game, trying to figure something out, or yeah, in this case I just stumbled across the idea that was like, Soglins attack piglins, so are they hostile? And yeah, they were indeed. So <laughs> here's shulker boxes, ravagers, and yeah, Zoglins, bean balloons. For your enjoyment leave a like and subscribe and put comments and questions down in the comment field below and i'll be happy to respond to you see ya